Hello there guys and gals, Lou Welsh Hunter here, back with yet another 100% achievement and trophy guide, and this time we're getting it all in the charming, Quintus and the Absent Truth. Now, this was developed by Wreck Tangle Games, published by East Asia Soft, and is usually available for £8.39 slash $9.99. So we play as a man and mouse, Big Alan with a small voice and small Quintus, a mouse with no voice. Uh, together we need to solve puzzles and all types of stuff in order to find our missing daughter who's gone. Yep, you guessed it, missing. Mad, isn't it? Now as for achievements, they are all very easy and pretty much story related. In fact, they are all story related as we need to grab all items in order to proceed the story, which in turn gives us all the yummy achievements and trophies. So be warned, this game can be slightly buggy. For me, for instance, I had to replay chapter 4 because of a bug where absolutely nothing was there. But if you get a good free smooth run at it, it'll take around 50 minutes to an hour to do. It is a charming little game and it's easy to boot, so with that being said then, let us begin. Now what I do have to laugh at here is Quintus, who is the mouse, is looking very much like, Yo, you wanna come at me bruh? I'll knock your little mouse balls the hell off man. In the, for some reason, I, uh, that, that's what Quintus exactly sounds like. Uh, he's got them big mouse balls and he looks like he wants to fight you, so that's always hilarious. But anyway, let's, uh, just mumbling on there, let us begin. Now, this plays as a sort of adventure slash slight puzzle slash walking simulator game because there'll be a lot of times in this game where you'll be walking and it'll seem like you've just aged about two months because uh, you can sl slightly sprint. Uh, but it's a very light jog, so uh, you can use the left stick to move the right bumper and the left bumper as you can see what I'm doing here I'm just going along with the music uh, a little bit of entertainment for the masses eh? um, But that's right bumper and left bumper to sort of look left and right slightly um, We never use it so it doesn't really matter But left stick to move right bumper left bumper to do what we're doing right now R uh, right stick to um, uh, have a look at the camera, move the camera about, click in the left stick once to start slightly jogging. It is a very slight jog, as it were. Um, we'll press the B button to crouch, we'll only use this once or twice. The X button to interact with objects and the Y button to pick up sort of letters and things like that. Um, and the A button to jump. So for now though, we, this is just the first cutscene and big old big Big Mouse Balls Quintus is going to turn on the light for us, and then we can finally begin. So here we go. Right, first thing we're doing then, going straight and then heading to the right through the door and go straight to the back cabinets and interact with this calendar right here. So you press the Y button to examine things, and then the X button to pick stuff up. So you can press the Y button to pop it down and turn around. Uh, go to out the left door first, and then we're going to start heading right up those stairs. Thank you, um... Quintus, so head all the way sort of back on yourself, go through the door on the left here, and interact with the vent at the top. Now, you will get a couple of achievements. After this little uh, bit of dialogue here, you should get the um, the notification here to, in order to bleh, use the damn thing. There it is. So press the X button to use it, and as it turns out, we just wasted our time. So head out, and then go to the opposite end of the stairs to the other side here, and you'll see the open vent just at the top. Quintus? We're going to speak to Big Quintus, who is going to push us. So we press X there on the top of the hole at the vent. He's going to push us the letter. We will get the achievement called the letter. So what I'd done first, I'd, I'd actually originally recorded about 15 minutes of gameplay. Then the electric electrics had shut off, so I had to do it again. But of course, I'd already got the achievement, so that's why they don't pop for me on screen just yet. But you should get one. So let's start heading down the stairs, go back in yourself, and head into the sort of living room area, and try to interact with the patio doors. Lovely looking garden, beautiful, but we can't get out. So we're going to go back the way we came, and we're going to turn to the left now, so the very first left here, into the door, in, go to the board at the back and interact with the keys, and like an absolute dong bag, we're going to drop it hilariously. So go to the sort of shelves at the back here, look at the floor, press the X button to use Quintus. That's all he is, that's all he is for us. Anything small, we are just going to use and abuse, whether that's your own self or our mouse friend, for some reason. Um, anyway, there's Quintus, so take the key from Quintus' bag, and then we can go back into the living room, so turn right here. 
and just interact with the door to head outside. Now, this uh, just gives me It the Clown goddamn vibes, in all fairness. So, uh, walk up to the balloon, turn around, and then Lydia's there looking all creepy and, you know, like she could just strangle you with the bunny ears, which is not creepy at all, of course. Uh, turn around, you're going to see the piano and interact with the key that is on top of said piano. Piano? I said piano. Anyway, with that one done, we can now get back into the house and uh, just go straight until we see the phone. There it is. We're going to wait for a little slight second right there. Press the X button there to pick up the phone. Hello? What you buying? Sure. What you selling? Yes. Oh, yeah. This? Anyway. Um, this is basically the end of the first chapter, so... Oh, by the way, for finding the key, you should have also got the, uh, key achievement. You probably would have guessed that by now, since it's more than likely unlocked for you. But that is what you'll get, so you should have the key, the letter, the key, and the chapter 1 achievement all popping deliciously for you right now. So, into chapter 2, a little bit of a cutscene again. Uh, hello? Is this Alan Shore? Yes. Who is this? We have your daughter. If you want to see her again, come to 6200 Northeast Wilding Road. My old recording studio. So welcome to your own old recording studio. So the first thing we're going to do is go up and interact with the door directly in front of us. Nah, nah, but the electricity is off, so we're just going to stand back and there's going to be a little bit of a light that is going to power its way through us. Well, I say through us, it's just going to come from the left here, so there it is. Look, that is obviously not creepy at all. You literally wouldn't... What you would do is normally just crap your pants, wouldn't you, if you see a big giant floating orb. But anyway, <laughs> running towards you. But anyway, we're going to follow this light for now. So we're heading to the left here. Uh, so we're going to be doing a bit of darting between hallways and everything, but it's not too bad. Uh, so let's head to the right. Uh, just go past all these doors. Creepy woman singing on her own again. Hello. You would literally just turn and run. But that is who we're going to follow instead, because of course, video game logic. And at the end of the hallway, you're going to see this door, but we can't actually use it yet. So from here, we're going to go back in ourselves and go into the first door here on the left. Don't creep me out like that, you... Dinking. Anyway, there's a hole on this shelf, okay, so we're going to put Big Quintus right there. Thing. Stupid ghostly death woman. Or she appears to be ghostly death woman. She could just be a random bride wandering the halls out of her mind, purely off her nut. Ah, we'll soon see, won't we? So, when Big uh, Mouse Balls Quinton there uh, opens it up, we're going to press and hold the X button here on the valve. There we go, and just wait until it's all done. Then we can go left out of the door, and then we're going to turn right to sort of head down here. Then we're going to go right again here at the end of the hallway, and then, of course, left and go through the openly door. Right, there's another valve at the, at the sort of right corner. There it is, so we're just going to press and hold the X button until it stops again, stops turning. And before we leave, have a look at the left side drawer here on the desk, and there's going to be the archive room key, the room that we couldn't get into earlier. So we've got that one. So from here, we're going to head back out, obviously head to the right, and we're going to keep going straight and going through the first door on the right. There are, she blows. So open that up, there's going to be another val, um, we're going to put Quintus down, sorry, first. And then go to the second door on the right. But we're just going to wait momentarily. Momentarily. Charlotte Trinity. Great name, Charles. That's, that's great. It's an awesome name. So eventually then, Quintus is somehow going to open the door for us lovely. And then we're going to interact with the valve straight in front of us. There it is. So sorry, got a little bit ahead of myself there. Forgot about Quintus actually helping us out. So that should be the third valve that we've unlocked. So from here, we're going to go to the left. And then we're going to go back down to the right at the end of the hallway. And then we are going to go through this door on the left. There it is. Scary chair. Ooh. But there is another valve here on the left side of the room. So press and hold the X button on that until it stops turning. The world stops turning. Then we can get the hell out of here. To the left. And then we're basically going to now head into the archive room. So straight down. There it is. Now there is another valve. Um, I do get a bit lost for some reason. But it's directly if, on the left as you turn around. There it is. 
So <laughs> we got there in the end again. Hold the X button there to turn it all the way. And that is good. So now we've got a path through these sort of shelves. Interact with the electric box. Interact with the switch. Slap it up. Ah, so spooky. And now we can just head back the way we came. So back through the hallway. Spooky stuff's going to start happening. Keep it going. From here, we're going to go to the left. There it is. And we're just going to go straight, straight, straighter than a straight thing on straight, straight land. Turn to the left. And you're going to see this big spooky light here at the end of the hallway. Yeah, it's creepy. Don't crap your pants. And then here we are in the sort of main area bit again. So turn, uh, we're going to go straight into the sort of single door ahead of us. Interact with the other door to go through it. At the end of the hallway, or at the end of the desk, is a button we can switch. That now opens the doors that we couldn't open up earlier on. It's all magic, baby. All magic. So let us go through said newly foundled, fangled doors into this area. This is the studio area. So a couple of little puzzles that we're going to do. First, interact with the keypad here on the end of the right-hand side. And we're going to put in the code 2863. So that's 2863. I'll say it again, 2863, then press the enter button, and so 2863, right? <laughs> Red. And then examine this piece of paper, there it is, so it's basically going to tell you what order to play the piano in, but what I've done is play, uh, put the code on screen anyway, so this is the order, you can see the codes at the bottom there, or the letters, so it's E, G, B, D, A, so you've got to sp uh, play the piano in that specific order, E, G, B, D, A. There it is, and then what's going to happen is, have a look at the keypad just above it, and it should say the number, 57, blah de blah whatever it is. I actually can't see because the, the recording, recording screen is tiny, but press the enter button, turn around directly around, and then in this room you're going to pick up a key and a photy. It's photo, damn it. I'm going to pick up this photy from my piano. Right, go into the next door on the left here, the only door that hasn't been opened. And we can interact with this big red button, or big green button. I don't even know what color that is. Oh my god, it's a secret room! Guess what, girl? Not Lydia, man. Not Lydia. Anyway, cutscene ends, chapter 2 ends. Job's done. Are you sure, Quintus? Okay, little buddy. You've got it from here. Okay, little buddy. You've got it from here. daughter no no i she she was you were meant to protect our daughter alan i i'm so sorry no you must get her back i don't know if that was supposed to be scary or funny, but I laughed and crapped my pants at the same time. So, as we begin, we are going through this little, um, uh, not mountain, but little cave or whatever it's called, and more cutscene. Again, you'll see that as we start now, chapter 3 and chapter 4, there's a lot of cutscene, a lot of dialogue, and a lot more walking left to do, but this is the secret room. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah the guy will explain it all. But this is the main sort of book of the game that we need to be focusing on and trying to get to. And luckily enough, of course, it is easy enough anyway. So, once we start and we're in the shrag carpeting, somewhere around right, yeah? So, turn to the right and you're going to see the big wooden plank going up. That is exactly what we're going to be climbing up. Ignoring the mouse trap, trying to go into it because that could mean death. Probably will, it is death. And then just head to the opposite side. And then just be very careful now, we, somehow somebody's brilliantly left us a measuring tape 
just randomly chilling from one end of the edge to the other table. So be careful. Just go across it, and then what we're going to do is climb up on the pentagon, and then full of sticks, which of course you're not going to do that by walking under it. So walk over it, climb into the starry bit, and then, damn boy, Biggie Smiles is coming. Somehow, the book appeared to have opened up a crack in a wall. Quintus went to win. So that opens up your crack. Uh, not that we want to go in there, but we're going to go in there. So jump straight down off the table and we're going to turn around because right by this little, you know, whatever sort of town that's supposed to be, little, little town made of blocks, that is where your crack is. So close your nose, we're going in for a crack dive. A strange light was coming from this Ooh. newly formed crack. Yeah. Found newly formed crack and decided to have a closer look Quintus couldn't believe what he was seeing in front of him. A familiar surrounding from photos Quintus had seen. A kitchen, but not just any kitchen. This one was from Alan and Christie's first home together, before Lydia, before even Quintus. Quintus was not sure how he got here, but he knew he wasn't meant to be here and needed to find his way back. Quintus scanned the room and could see another book like the first across the room on the kitchen table. However, the table was too high up for Quintus to reach the book, so he needed to formulate a plan. Maybe I could use the cat to knock the book off the table, Quintus thought to himself. I'll have to get the cat's attention to the table though. I should try to find something I can throw onto the table. Somebody's left the damn fridge open! Close the fridge, it'll spoil all the good stuff! So as we begin, we're going to turn to the right and you can see the broom already sticking out. So we're just going to nip past the hob. Don't worry about the cat, he is not going to try and kill you here. Now what you're supposed to do is push the broom down, but try not to fall off if you can. So sprint towards it and then give it a little nudge. It may take a couple of nudges. Um, if you do fall down, it's fine because uh, if you do fall down, to the left by the fridge is a whole bunch of shelves that you can climb back up. So if you do fall down, it doesn't matter. Just go to the left towards the fridge and you'll see the sort of ramps on the shelves to go back up. But if we knock the broom down, which we have done, what we can do is go to the left and you can see the fridge right there. And then what we're doing is just heading all the way basically to the edge of the counter. So we're going past the sink and you're going to see exactly what we mean in just a minute. So just head past the sink for a sec. So here we are. So if you did fall down from the broom and you come up these uh, shelves and ramps, you come up to this area anyway, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, but so you see the sausages? Jump down on them. And then stay on this uh, little shelf right here. Grab the cat food with the Y button. And then just fall straight back down. Beautiful. So somehow, old, um, uh, uh, what's his name? Quentis. Old Quentin's big balls has got the uh, strength in it to carry cat food everywhere. So anyway, we're going to head to the broom, which should be directly in front of us, and we're just going to climb all the way up. And here's the big one! So, what we're going to do is st stand as close to the edge as you can, aim the cat food quite a way up, and then press the right trigger to throw it. So, get it up as sort of far as you can, high up as you can, and cat food should get there. And we are done with this part. We're gonna basically then just jump down, get onto the book. Ah! Yeah, so I'm not gonna do a death noise, we're gonna go with a fart death noise instead. But anyway, that's the, this little area done. We're going to head back to the secret room. 
which actually just sounds like a sequel to The Room, another Tommy Wiseau classic. Quintus stands on top of the book once more, and again, another crack opens up for the little mouse to explore. Sadly though, we do have to do a lot more walking, so what we're going to do is head directly in front of us. We're going to climb all the way up the shelves, which you might have already done if you fell from the broom earlier on. And then we're just going to go past the sink, and then back to the crack, basically where we started the level. So, we're going crack diving again. Hopefully you haven't got a phobia of cracks. Big, small, chunky or thin. And there she blows! There we go. So, back into the secret room, but the secret room has changed. So what we're going to do is head slightly to the right, as you can see uh, on the piano. There is a little ramp going up, just again, just perfect for us. It's like they know that a mouse is trying to catch them, or a rat, or whatever the hell we are. I'm just going to say mouse. But anyway, heading up the ramp. Obviously, we're going to turn to the right here on the old piano. I said piano. And then we're going to go down the measuring tape again, try to be very careful. Heading up the uh, the chair leg. And, I mean, to be fair, this goddamn mouse has got some stamina, bro. Off the table, we're going to go on to the next book. Hey, you smell that? We're going for another crack dive. So, head to the right here. We're going down the chair. Be careful not to fall off. Uh, because we actually need to get basically to the end of this chair leg. And there we go. So, we can jump in and go cracking once again. If your name is Phil, well, I hope you can fill my cracking. <laughs> of course, of course. You knew that was coming. Right, head to the left immediately as we start. And you're going to see a whole bunch of blocks on our right, which says Lydia, etc. And then we're just going to go around the blocks and you can see a house into the distance. Well, that's where we're heading next. Elevator. It was battery operated, but it appeared that there was no battery in place. Quintus knew what he must do. Find a battery for the elevator and then maybe he could get on top of the bedside table and get a glimpse of a little baby Lydia. So as we get into the house then, what we're going to do is turn left here by the stairs, go around the kitchen and turn right. And just keep following the corridor down until we get to this single door, head in, turn to the right, open up the garage door, or whatever that's supposed to be, and then pick up the battery. And again, we are going for pure steroid Quinton strength at the minute. This is just epic strongman stuff right now. Little mouse carrying batteries and cat food and... Ugh, stronger than me. Which is depressing. Anyway, we're heading in basically in a straight line at the minute. Uh, we're going to just go around this sort of... It, it, what looks like a building. It's supposed to be a, a crib or a cot, wherever you're from. Or, you know, if uh, you're, you're from a part of a world that doesn't really do beds, then the floor, I suppose. But anyway, head around the car park. Basically to the bottom edge of the, of the um, bedroom. And you're going to see a little red light. There it is. So what you need to do is just immediately walk into it. Not around it and then smash it. You need to walk into it to stick the battery in. So, the, yep, the, uh, the elevator's going strong. So we're going to turn directly around here and start heading up this ramp from where we just were. So we're going to go up one. And then the next one, which is straight in front of us. Now, why do, you know, big car parks in big towns such as Cardiff, St. David's Centre, why do they have big, massive ramps? 
Um, and we're just going to turn to the left though. And then to the right, and here is the elevator. So we just need to wait for the elevator to drop. And then turn around, and we're going to wait for it. But yeah, why does big, like, car parks and stuff in towns just have those massive ramps which take about two days to get up before you can get a goddamn parking space? What is that about? Unless nobody else has that, and it's just me, and then I'm just talking absolute nonsense, unless you're from Cardiff. Right, so when we get to the top then, we're just going to head just around here to the right. And what we're going to do is actually head into the uh, cot slash crib by n n uh, nobbing yourself straight through. There is no Lydia, but there is another book that we're going to grab. Hala. This literally just... Doesn't this just sound or look like the start of, you know, an absolutely epically crappy homemade rap video? So thought it best he go back and report to Alan. Yo, it's me, your boy. Got a joke for you. What time do butts get up? At the crack of dawn. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, what we're going to do is just head straight down now through the hole in the gap. And then we're going to basically turn directly around from where we were because we're underneath the crib slash cot and head back to the old crack. <laughs> Why couldn't the toilet paper cross the road? Because it was stuck in a crack. <laughs> Ah, uh, I got loads of these. Day, Quintus Ford, or was it another wrong turning in time? Quintus made his way through the wreckage to find some... So anyway, you can't actually get through the gap there, so what we need to do is turn around, and we're going to start following the only path that you can, really. So we're sort of heading up the ramp, and you can jump down, just head up the next ramp straight in front of us, and turn right. Now... There is only one way you can go, but it can be sort of easy to get lost. So turn to the left, jump straight down, and we can just head up this ramp. Uh, turn to the right. I thought some of the music is actually pretty cool in this game, to be fair as well. So head all the way around, basically doing a 360 on yourself, and just head down up the ramp and then across. And then we can finally, we're basically at the end of this bit now, so we can head up the cheese looking grater type thing. Jump up the other cheese grater. Now just be careful when you get to the edge, make sure that you're walking over the block. There's a little gap which you can easily fall down, so make sure you've gone over the block. And then what you can do is actually just jump straight down. You don't have to go for the chair like I did right here. You can just jump straight down. And then just head straight for the piano because that is where the last crack is. <laughs> And what do eggs like doing on stage? Yeah. Cracking yolks! Heh <laughs> uh, No. But we do have to wait for a bit for Saint Cracking to appear. So stay just here until it does appear. And then nip straight through, Mr. McGrew. Ah, there we go, Mr. Blow. And continue towards the newly formed crack. So we are actually coming up now to the end of chapter 3, so what we're going to do is just head forward and then we're going to turn slightly left and then all we're doing, you can just see the light, you could have probably just seen the light in the distance, so just head underneath the settee and you're going to see the the uh, last light that we're going to have a look into. It be the same day the story began. This was Lydia's birthday. If it was, then Quintus knew what he had to do. Wake up Alan. The light, of course, be in the window here. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're just going straight and we're going to turn left slightly. You can already see where we're going. There is a little wooden plank that we're going to go and climb up onto the table right there. Head up there. I mean, you don't have to if you don't want, but you just won't finish the game, that's all. Quintus arrived in the dining room to see Alan at the table, asleep with his head in his arms just as Quintus had anticipated. Now all that was left to do was to wake Alan up. You 
you shouldn't be here. Dude is blooding from his eyes. He is blooding from his eyes. Did anyone see that? What the, what the hell's going on? Who was this man? What was he doing in their house? How can he wake up Alan now? But then it dawned on Quintus. He doesn't have to wake up Alan. Because he already did. Get in there. Wake up, quickly. So welcome to chapter 4 then, this one will take around 20 minutes or so. In fact actually there's the end cutscene is about 6 minutes long so it's only going to take us around 15 minutes to do this one. So what we're going to do first then is just follow the light. This is a very very long sort of walk in and dialogue talking kind of one so um, yeah I won't be speaking much but I'll pop in with a couple of jokes just for you guys. Anyway, all we're doing, like I said, is just following the light for now. Um, there's only really one way to go until we can get onto a street. But since I'm here, what did one butt cheek say to the other butt cheek? You crack me up. Ha! Ah, get it? Butt cracks? Yeah, yeah, you've seen that coming to my loft, didn't you? So here we are then, onto the street, we're going to turn left in just a mo. There we go, Mr. Bro. And you're probably thinking, right, let's get into the nitty gritty stuff. Uh, but what you're going to do is actually just basically keep heading straight until I tell you to turn right. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, also, by the way, say, crack my finger backwards. <laughs> So just past this bigger area, there's going to be one little sort of side alleyway that we can just go into here. And you can see why we're sort of doing just a light jog, what I said earlier. So here's the right path, by the way. And what we're going to do is just try and interact with the gate. I mean, you can really see it now in these long walking sections. The gate is electronic. Um, yeah, it takes a bloody while. So we're going to turn around. Cat's going to nip past here on the left. So what we're going to do is follow L Cat. We're going to take the next left. And a lovely little house, but what we're going to do is go uh, behind the house and straight into a barn. It's an obvious looking barn, you should know what a barn looks like. There we go, it's a, it's, it's a barn. I don't know what else I can say about that for the minute. <laughs> So 
So when we get in said barn, we're gonna go straight and go up the ladder. So press X to go up the ladder and then up with the left stick. Turn to the left. And then you need to go around, trying to get stuck on the roof like I did. <clears throat> Excuse me. Press the B button here to crouch. Which, uh, for some reason, I almost forgot. And then we're going to start heading down these bits of hay bales right here. Lovely stuff. Turn directly around. Do a 360 on yourself. Go outside. Hey. Turn to the right. Yeah. And there's going to be an electric box we can whap open right. and use as well. So, let's go back to the church. We also get the gate achievement as well. So, what we can do is just head in. Go to the right here. There's going to be a little gap, and then head out straight through the front. Job done. So now, just head <laughs> basically back to the church. So when we get to the end of uh, this path, turn to the right. And then to the right again, here we are then, gate opens up. Right, so what we're going to do, we're not going to head directly into the church first, there's going to be a little gap on our left that we can just nip through, even though in normal life you could probably just jump over them, so head through here, we're going to go behind the church and we're going to find our Christy. deceased wife's grave. And, that, and it's an obvious one because it's got a big violin at the top. Christy? Wait, what? Oh my god, she's in a live thing! Right, as we turn around, the light's back. So we're just gonna head actually inside the church now and really wonder what in the crap in hell is going on. Has somebody defiled my wife's grave or is she actually alive and she's out for revenge? Probably the uh, second one. Right, so head into the church then. Press X button to use the doors. And we're going to have a little bit of dialogue here with El Lito when it's going to start unraveling and seeing what the hell's actually going on. Time. Who are you? It's me, Alan. Charlotte Trinity. You know, your A&R representative. Charlotte? What? What happened to you? You really haven't worked this all out yet? What happened? They killed me, Alan. Who? Andromeda Records. And they're going to kill Lydia if you don't hurry. Quickly, down to the sewers. It will lead you to where you need to be. Jesus Christ, they killed her off! What the hell? Right, so, secret passageway is going to open to the left. We're going to head down the stairs. And now you're really wondering what's going on. Now, if you remember, Charlotte was... I did show her name while we were waiting for Quintus to open the door in the recording studio. So, uh, anyway, from here, we're going to turn to the right. And we're just going to go across here, turn to the left, and then there'll be another uh, little gap to your right. Uh, by the way, just wondering, why do ducks have feathers? So you don't see their butt quack. <laughs> oh, they just get better and better, right? Yeah, should be paid for this. But since I'm not paid for writing jokes down this little hallway, what we're going to do is take the first right. So turn right right here. And then we're going to take the f uh, first left. So and it's coming up right, meow. There she blows. Right, so this next little puzzle is supposed to be a coloured one. But, just in case you're like me and you have difficulty uh, with certain colours or you're potentially colourblind or something, I'm just going to tell you in number order. So, from left to right being one to five. So what we're going to do is press number one first. And then we're going to press number five. But you have to be dead on centre with it for it to work. Just to let you know. And then number two. Number three. And then number four. So like I said, if you try and hit hit any of the buttons from the side, it won't actually work. Just in case you're wondering. But it is one, five, two, three, four. So here we go then. Heading to the left. And then what we're going to do is head over this little uh, bridge once more. And then... Yeah, I keep... <laughs> I keep thinking he's sprint he's doing more Usain Bolt sprinting, but he's doing, you know, the the eight thousand meter light jog as it were. Anyway, head onto the wooden pallet, keep going forward until there is a cutscene. There it is. 
Now this is another bit of long cutscene dialogue-y stuff. They made me write that letter, you know. The one informing you that you are no longer a musician for Andromeda Records. They needed you out of the way. But why? So they could carry out their master plan. They believed if they took everything from you, you would be too down in self-misery that you wouldn't see the absent truth. Though, once I found out they had taken Lydia from you too, I couldn't stand it. I thought if I called you and told you to go to Andromeda Records, you would be able to put a stop to it. That was you on the phone? Voice changer. Sadly, once they realized what I had done, they decided to cut me out of Andromeda Records too. Charlotte, that's terrible. I'm... I'm so sorry. I'm still not understanding the big picture here though. There's no time to explain, Alan. My light's dimming. And you've got to get to Lydia before it's too late. Just remember, the book is the key. Wait, what book? Where is it? Is the key. Charlotte? Charlotte? Okay, I've got to find this book. So when we're at the end, we're going to turn around and we're going to head up these steps in the little gap. So again, we are crack free now, so there's not going to be any more cracking jokes, which is a shame. So we're going to open the door and we're going to go straight. And you can just see our little pal all sleeping or dead and stuff. I don't think he's dead. He's not dead. Trust me. Quintus? Quintus! I know, little buddy. It's so good to see you. Right. Time to find this book. Right, so then, as we begin, we're going to head straight and go past these chairs, basically heading towards the door in the back. But when we get past these columns, we're going to turn to the left, and we are going to see these bits of wood. And we're just going to look at the floor, press X button to use Quinton. Quintus. Now for me, this is where the bug happened, so I ended up being dropped into a big white area of nothing. So what I had to do was basically just replay the chapter, which was a bit of a pain in the ass. But if you do, like I said, encounter any bug or any glitch, anything like that, simply just um, quit out of the main game, go back into it, and at the main menu, um, press chat to select, and you'll just have to redo the chapter. That should get things going again. Uh, but as for this bit, we are just heading straight through the chairs, and there is going to be a little... A uh, little place we can go on the left now, a little vent looking thing. And there she blows. Again, a lot of these are areas are quite, you know, pretty much straightforward. There's not a lot that you can really do or go wrong with it. Uh, as you can tell, since we're almost, you know, ten minutes away from the, the, the end of the game. In fact, like four minutes away from actually doing any gameplay. So, heading to the left, we're going to see another little wooden plank. And that is what we are going to head up. And I'll tell you what, fair play to uh, Alan and uh, Quintus. I'm actually knackered just watching them run all this bloody way. So past the desk, and we're going to see a little drawer that's open on the right. So jump down, pick up the key. We're on pure, once again, steroid strength, although I think a key should be fine for a little mouse thing. And then what we're going to do is just head all the way back to Alan. So when we come out of the vents here, 
go all the way to the left and you'll see him just just go underneath him and we will regain big Aldog. And here we are then, as Big Aldog. So take the key, turn around, and we're going to have a look at the first door on our left. It's the only door on our left. But now we can head straight through this one. There we go. We're going to go up any sets of stairs, one on the right, one on the left. It doesn't make too much of a monkey's crack bag of difference. Uh, so we're just heading to the top, go to the left, and just go straight forward. And you can see the book now that is on the stage. Very creepy stuff going on, of course. So, you know exactly what we're doing. We're going to head back down the stairs and basically head towards the stage. Which, of course, is what you'd do. You wouldn't crap yourself and run away. No, you'd keep figuring it out. Although, I suppose his daughter's missing and stuff. But, oh, there she is! Looking all very alive and stuff. We found you, Lydia. What happened to you, other year, girl? Anyway, head up the ramp, interact with the book. What do we do? Maybe the book has some answers. Time travel? That sounds too dangerous. Resurrection. Raise a loved one from the dead, but a deal with the devil doesn't come free. Sacrifice a relative of the deceased for the devil to resurrect thee. So, that means... So that means someone has to die. Oh, Alan. You weren't meant to get in the way of this. What are you doing? Haven't I lost enough? Andromeda Records was going under, Alan. Ever since we lost Christy, the angel of the violin. We haven't made any money, and you... You stopped making music for us as well. We had nothing left. Then we heard of a book that could change everything. It could resurrect the dead. We could bring Christy back. We could reunite her not only with you, but the world. And bring back Andromeda Records to its former glory. But we needed a blood relative to trade for her life. Lydia, you can't do this! I'm afraid it's too late, Alan. We have Christie's body. We have Lydia in the blood circle. Now we just need to make the sacrifice. No! <laughs> Christy. Quickly, there must be a way to stop this. To reverse a curse that has already begun, these musical notes need to be played or sung. The devil hates melodies so pure and sweet. Play these notes, the devil will retreat. I haven't played in so long. But I have to. Now that was actually the last bit of gameplay. We've got a couple of minutes of cutscene and dialogue left. But I do want you to just uh, listen to this. Because this next bit of singing cracked me up. Apart from all the madness that went on with the story, the singing cracked me up. So have a good listen. little child bring back that darling smile I can't carry on without you without that sweet noise the laughter from all the joys if there's no us there's no getting through through this life through all this pain it wouldn't be the same it's time to fix this world and make up 
know I can't get by without you by my side Little child, it's time to wake up Wake up Yeah, yeah, yeah Oh, wake up Yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> It wasn't that funny. Also, the guy's real pathetic no, when the two bad guys were just about to kill his daughter. Well, literally, you'd be going nuts and screaming and kicking off. But nope, you're about to see your daughter get stabbed or something and you get a little pathetic. No. Anyway, all's well that ends well, right? Um, no, I love it. <laughs> okay. Daddy? Yeah? How did you find me again? Well... I had a lot of help. Quintus? Yay, Quintus! Well done, little buddy. My hero. He certainly was. Good night, Lydia. Good night, Quintus. I'm going to record this, as my memory has been horrible lately. This has been the strangest day. From Lydia going missing, to being guided by the spirit of Charlotte, to finding out that Andromeda Records planned all this, and, of course, seeing Christy again. When they dug up Christy, they didn't think about her spirit, the spirit of a mother who never even got a chance to hold her baby. You dig that spirit up, that spirit is going to come back with every emotion that they felt before they passed. The anger, the pain, the longing for their child. Christy's spirit only wanted one thing. To help me get Lydia back. It was hard to say goodbye to her again. Luckily, I had Quintus. Or I don't think I could have made it through today. Quintus is Lydia's favorite toy. I always make up stories about his day to make her smile. It was strange. When Christie's spirit knocked me out. So there we go, then, guys and gals. That was Quintus and the Absent Truth. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you in, uh, the game. I hope you enjoyed the game and that the guide helped as well. If you did, of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend as well. Big shout out to everyone who continues to support the channel on Patreon. You guys and gals are legends, literal legends. And there we go, then. So that'll be it for me. I shall see you in the next one. There's your twelve out of twelve. Big love.